Good morning, good morning. So, John, yeah, thank you so much for joining morning. us. Hi, Simon, how are you? It's good, John, time. how are you, mate? I'm fine, fine. I'm just in the car. I've stopped the car. So good lad. I'm on the lay-by. Thank I'm on my way up to my... Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, I hadn't heard the news until, basically, uh, you told me. Yeah, so th- this news uh, broke in, in in the last hour, Sir John. What do you think? Was it inevitable, in your view, that, that Steve would be leaving the football club at some stage? Oh, I think, basically, um, after the result last weekend and the way they played, um, I think it, 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 it's... I've always had a maximum, I'm trying to know this, basically, if you're down at the bottom three at Christmas time, it's hard getting away from relegation. And they've got a few problems and they're going to have to bring some leadership in as soon as possible. And uh, I, I was expecting it earlier, to be quite honest, and so were the fans. And I think that if they hadn't basically set this to, to go, they would lose confidence with the fans. So, John, I know, and you've told me on so many occasions how proud you were with your association with uh, the football club. But Steve Bruce was exactly the same. A proud man who is proud to be associated with his boyhood club. Well, that, that, that's, that's no argument about it. He's a nice chap. He's here to get on with, but in the sense of his time's just run out for him. It's one of those things. You look back the number of managers we had at Newcastle in the past, and they've all gone. And as, as I suppose at the time lived for everyone, and Steve basically... It's probably been the patsy for um, the previous owner, and they never got the cash to invest. Um, and there's a lot of reasons, on it, but the, the fans lost confidence in them. And once you do that, you, you've got to reorganise. And they, they have no choice. They have no choice now but to, to find. Simon knows this. You need leadership at this moment in time. The club needs leadership and a few players as well. But at the moment in time, you've got to sort things out both on the park and off the park. You're nodding in agreement with Oh, no, absolutely with Sir John. right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, John and I have spent many times talking about football and talking about the business of football and the challenges that await us and the challenges that uh, confront us. When you look at the situation regarding Steve, would you have expected, John, with this ownership takeover, that they took him out straight away or would you have expected them to have left him in for, the, for, for that particular game? Would it have been better in your view? And I don't want to put you in a situation as the ex-owner. No, 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 it's, uh, it, it, it's uh, not basically, you got to look from the point of view that... Um, he had a contract. They basically understand basically if, if they break it, you've got to pay him a lot of money. So yep. you've got to negotiate that. And um, basically, the, the fans want him to go. But the thing is, you got, if you get rid of a fund, you've got to have somebody to bring in. You cannot leave yourself in limbo, not in the position we're in. And it's, it's, been, a, it's been a difficult situation for Amanda and, and the, the consortium. But I think basically from the point of view of the PR of the club and the, between the relationship between the, 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 the new owners and the fans, he had to go. His, his time was up. Yeah. And that, that, that's nothing against him. Basically. No, that's a fair comment, John. I think he was the one element of the scenario surrounding Newcastle at this moment in time, right or wrong, that was, was, that was negative. When you look back on it, John, would Steve Bruce been the sort of appointment that you'd have made if you'd have been chairman and still owner of Newcastle? No, if I was... If I was looking now for a manager, you and I know, basically, in my day, basically, I had to do tremendous regard for um, Arsene Wenger. Yeah. I thought he was an intellectual in the game. He was. If I was looking for someone now, I would be looking for someone. The game's changed. Yeah. And you need basically to think it's for the game. And I'll be looking for someone of the calibre of Arsene Wenger. He just, I travelled up, I travelled up with a train with him. And, you know, hello. Hello, we're here, John. We're here, John. We've got you. Here we got, sorry, another call came in. I travelled up on the train with him once when we played in, uh, um, Tottenham Arsenal down in London. I had a most interesting conversation with him. He's it, just an intellectual. That's the kind of manager I feel we need a thinker, someone who knows which way the game's going. So, John, looking at the squad uh, and the lack of quality, how big is this rebuild job to get, say, anywhere near what the fans will be happy with? Uh, I, I, I would guess it's going to take up to five years to gradually change the team. You might try to do it overnight. When you've got a, a, a team off the park, somebody running the club, but it's going to be a case you're going to get taken to the cleanest by the amount of money uh, other clubs are going to want um, for players. So it depends where to spend. It's going to be interesting to see how they tackle this problem, what which players they go for, what one or two big names are just steady. If you look at when we were Simon, we weren't going to go down, and we had to bring in some players like Killer Kel trying, you know, just to hold the defence. And when we got promotion, and in a sense, they weren't um, Premier League players. I think you might have to do is bring some players in in the next in January just to hold the fort. It's you've got to stop the relegation yeah. because if you if you go down, it's not easy these days to get out of the lower league.
Yes, in, 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 in spite of the money that they might have, Sir John. Sir John, everything changes. It's all cyclical, isn't it? Uh, it certainly changed when you appointed Kevin Keegan back in 1992. So the, the, the next appointment is crucially important, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's one of the most important. There's two. Somebody run the club who's going to be there day to day and knows basically to keep hold of the, 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 and the and that liaison between the fans and the consortium. But the manager, he's the person that he, actually... He basically runs your team. He picks your team. We were looking with Keegan. Keegan had been out of the game for so many years, but he knew where all the players were. Yes. And he came in, and we just said, we didn't know who were the players. He said, I want these players, and we backed them, and we were lucky. But in a sense, they're going to have to basically know where they're going to get the players. But I would hate to see it's just going 100 million here and 100 million there. Yeah. That's not football. That's not football. So, John... I'm going to let the cat out of the bag to a degree. Simon and I are going to be in Newcastle on Friday. You very kindly are going to be joining us. You're such a respected figure at the at the football club. So, John, as a former owner and chairman and life president, if you had a message for Newcastle United fans this morning, what would your message be? Well, it's, it's got to be one, it's one of hope. I'm quite hopeful for the club, but you've got to have basically, it's, things aren't going to happen overnight. We have to take it easy. We have to be to believe in the sense it's going to it will happen, but it's going to take time, at least five years, to turn this club around. And that's where that's the sort of period in the sense I've got to be contented at that period. As a fan, Sir John, how difficult has it been to see the fans and how unhappy they are of recent times at the football club? Well, it, it's 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 like myself. I've got my box and I go, but you lose you lose hope. The way we've been playing, we've been in the relegation in the past few years for so many years now. It was inevitable we're going to go down again. Had we not had this change, because uh, Mike wouldn't invest the money in, in the players, and uh, he wanted to be out. So we're, we're caught in this dilemma, but but um, it, it's been a very difficult time for all of us. And but now we've got some hope. Whatever has been said about the Saudis, etc. As far as football goes, you know, we have some hope at the club, and I have my own opinion of basically what the other clubs are trying to do. But that's another story. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker, TalkSport.